Hello, BarkerCast listeners and Occupy Midian members. I'm Joe, and tonight I'm going to talk to you about the Cabal Cut Blu-ray. Welcome back. So, like I said, today we're going to talk about the Cabal Cut Blu-ray. And this Blu-ray came out on September 21st uh, on Occupy Midian first. It was, we made an exclusive announcement on the BarkerCast blog on July 13th. We announced that the Nightbreed Cabal Cut was going to be released. It was going to be a limited run of 250 copies. And it was going to have uh, an introduction by Mark Miller two commentary tracks, which we'll get to in a bit. And uh, it, it was gonna come out with a poster by uh, Ralph McQuarrie and Danielle Serra. And it was gonna come with a uh, Decker uh, pin, a Decker en enamel pin, and uh, 10 postcards, I believe. So my copy is, has a slipcase, but it's not numbered because, uh, disclaimer, I was part of the commentary track with Brian Danhauser. So, and the box here, uh, you may recognize this artwork because it originally came out on that book, The Nightbreed Making of the Film. You can see it here. And uh, if you don't have this book, trust me, find a copy of it because it's really amazing. Uh, it not only has the script, it has Clive Barker storyboards, it has... Um, behind the scenes pictures, it has paintings and drawings, it has maps of the sets. You know, you can see the the Berserker and the, the Tabernacle. So, really amazing book. This came out in 1990 by Fontana Books. So if you don't have a copy, please find one. and <laughs> You will not be sorry. So, going back to the Blu-ray. Here it is, Tim White's illustration on the cover, as you can see, with uh, Boone and Lori on the hill at the end, right there. And right now, my Blu-ray is inside the player. And you can see right there on the menu that there are two commentary tracks available on this release. One of them features Russell Charrington, restoration producer for the Cabal Cut, and his friend, uh, Jimmy Johnson, who was also an editor of The Cabal Cut. And the other commentary track features me, Jose, and Ryan Danhauser, uh, the other host of the BarkerCast. So we did our best to give you a very, you know, fact-filled, uh, fun commentary track. So please let us know what you thought about it. Um, <clears throat> I just finished listening to Russell's track with Jimmy today. And I thought it was really interesting because they expounded on their experience as um, the original editors of Cabal Cut and traveling around the world with Occupy Midian, all the events that were created by Occupy Midian and, you know, that 50 screenings, I think, and maybe 20,000, 20 to 25,000 fans saw several different versions of the Cabal Cut. And I say versions because another thing I want to recommend is... If you, if you aren't sure of what the Cabal Cut is or what's the difference between that and the Director's Cut, then you should go on our BarkerCast blog because we have two articles that will really fill you in on everything you need to know about Occupy Midian, Nightbreed, and the Cabal Cut, and the Director's Cut. So one article is uh, Nightbreed is 27, a recap of how we got here. And in that article, I explain... Bit, uh, you know, bit by bit, exactly everything that happened um, from the foundation of Occupy Midian, from how the name came to be, thanks to Lor uh, thanks to Laurie, thanks to Ann Bobby, uh, who was the first one to say uh, Occupy Midian. Um, you will find out all that, all those stories in our commentary track uh, in this release. And uh, that article also goes in depth on who were the major players of Occupy Midian, uh, what were the screenings that happened, uh, who was Russell Charrington, uh, how many versions of the Cabal Cut were made, uh, how the Nightbreed uh, Director's Cut was uh, born, really, and how it won a Saturn Award for Best Blu-ray Release. 
So the other article that I think is interesting for everyone to read is written by Ryan Denhauser. It's called All the Versions of Nightbreed Explained. And in that article, you can understand better what is the difference between the director's cut and the cabal cut. And, you know, we talk about the Nightbreed theatrical cut, then the work prints that were found, and the Cabal cut that went through several incarnations, really. The, the Cabal cut had, like, between eight to ten different incarnations, uh, some of which, you know, pared down a little bit from the original Cabal cut um, because of a few things, like pacing, uh some characters died twice <laughs> in the first versions of the Cabal Cut. And uh, basically, you know, Jimmy Johnson and, and, and Russell Charrington just could not stop uh, working on it as a document in progress, right? So you can learn all about the different versions of Nightbreed that exist, which is now really out of date because we have to include an extra about this Cabal Cut. So... Every one of Clive Barker's books that he adapted and directed always had changes to the story and characters here and there, and Cabal was no exception. In the translation from Cabal to Nightbreed, Boone and Laurie changed, Peliquin changed, Jackie became Kinski. However, this is the only one of Clive Barker's movies that ended up having enough material due to changes and reshoots demanded by producers and distributors that allowed for dramatic changes to the adapted story. Decker became more imposing, more central to the story, because, of course, as a stereotypical slasher character, this appealed to the executives as a way to market the movie to a wider audience within the horror genre. If Halloween was a commercial hit and a groundbreaking film, it also ended up warping the genre through the misuse of its premise as a cheap and easy way to make millions off a movie that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to produce. It exploited something deep within our subconscious and turned horror into something that was less about suspense, thrills, plot, and started replacing it with more gore, jump scares, and on-screen violence by a recognizable monster that could potentially be turned into a franchise. Back to Nightbreed. If you have a copy of the Nightbreed making of the film Fontana book, this contained a multitude of evidence that something had gone wrong with the story and the movie that was delivered. Even Clyde Barker himself said in that book's forward, movies change and change and change. Somewhere halfway through this journey, I'm setting these words on paper. Maybe the profoundest doubts about this project are past, and I'm finally on safe ground, believing we've made a good movie, but I'm laying no bets. In both the film and the book, the head honcho of Midian, Lylesburg, is much preoccupied with the fact that the breed must remain hidden. What's below remains below, he keeps insisting. But fantasy is a kind of archaeology, the digging up of buried images from the psyche, the bringing to light of hidden wonders. We're lucky. A different kind of archaeology happened to this movie. Eight years ago, during a spring cleaning at the Seraphin offices, VHS PAL tapes surfaced from behind a dresser, without much to go by but a sticker reading Nightbreed. After a few of these tapes were sent to England and were screened by Phil and Sarah Stokes in 2009, they were digitized and sent back to Seraphin, and several announcements were made on the website Revelations about this new footage, and a campaign started to ask Morgan Creek for help in locating the missing footage and restore the movie. But somewhere along the line, things never gathered enough momentum to reach critical mass. But the wheels were turning. In one of his visits to his friend Clive Barker, Russell Charrington got a copy of these work prints on DVD to watch, but he could already see in his mind that there was a new and better version of Nightbreed waiting to be brought to light using this material. Along with editor Jimmy Johnson, they set out to make the first assembly cut of Nightbreed using a copy of the second draft of the Nightbreed script as a guide and created the Cabal Cut, named after the novel Cabal as they wanted Clive's intended vision and story to be represented as it was meant to be originally, before interference and reshoots and a different editor was brought in to complete the theatrical cut. The Cabal cut was of extreme importance as a working document of what this movie could be, and it rallied the fans behind something that could be screened, and the word of mouth spread like wildfire. After the original screening, people were off writing about it and wanting to see more. They wanted it to be screened near them at events and film festivals. Occupy Midian was created and things were running on a momentum that was hard to stop. 
Fifty screenings and about 20,000 audience members later, Morgan Creek, Seraphin, and Shot Factory struck a deal to bring the director's cut to the fans in 2014. Now this version of the movie, The Cabal Cut, a stepping stone in this process, is finally released when no one thought it would happen. Rebuilt to feature better quality material thanks to the discovery of the footage and storage used for the director's cut, it still features some 12 minutes of work print, but for anyone that had a chance to see this in a screening, we didn't care about that. All we wanted was to see more. This release offered two commentary tracks, and I can say about Russell and Jimmy's track that it was a pleasure to listen to it, as they talked about the behind the scenes of constructing it, how Clive reacted to it, the screenings around the world, all stuff that will make you understand a little better the passion and work that went into bringing the Cabal Cut to life. This fevered dream didn't have to stay hidden below. It wanted to be set free. Thanks to everyone who supported this movement and discussed the movie, told their friends about it, attended a screening, bought the merchandise, and joined our group on Facebook to share their experience with it, their collectibles, and photos of the screenings and panels that they attended. After seeing this movie so many times, and in so many forms, it's hard for me to dissect this version in particular because my memories of it always seem to mix everything I've seen in a strange version that only exists in my head. There were between 8 to 10 different versions of the Cabal Cut, and I'm sure if given the chance, a lot of people out there would still like to change it further, find more footage, make it better, mold it to their idea of perfection. I understand that. I am the kind of guy who wants more Nightbreed. I had an amazing time working with Ryan to make our commentary track, and I think you will enjoy this version, finally crystallized in this form for the release, but still being worked on out there by some of you. Good luck! This release came in two versions, 50 standard and 200 deluxe. The deluxe added a numbered slipcase, a Decker enamel pin badge, as well as two 11 by 17 posters featuring art by Ralph McQuarrie and Danielle Serra, a set of 10 postcards, and a Rorschach vinyl sticker. In this release, the new stuff shows up immediately in the menu screen because the footage that you see in the menu screen here with Shuna Sassy and the drummer and uh, uh, Devil Lude, this is footage that is not part of the director's cut or uh, the theatrical cut. So this is footage that you can see in the deluxe edition of the director's cut. And here is my copy of the Director's Cut Deluxe. As you can see, it's signed by Clive Barker, Simon Banford, Nicholas Vince, uh, and Bobby, which is really wonderful. I, I really enjoyed meeting all these, these fine actors. And I also have a couple of Director's Cuts signed by the cast, as you can see here. Another one of my pride and joy in my collection. So, getting back to this Cabal Cut. It opens with a introduction by Mark Miller, which I will play right now. So in this introduction, Mark Miller, the vice president of Seraphin, uh, introduces you to what the Cabal Cut is and the re historical relevance of it as, you know, a, 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 a cinematic document, really, because the Cabal Cut, if anything, was at its core two things. Originally, it wasn't even meant to be seen by anybody. It was meant just for uh, Russell Charrington and Jimmy Johnson to show it to Clive so Clive would be happy to see what could be done with the work prints. Of course, they always knew that this was not the ideal format for Nightbreed, but at the time, it was what they had available to work with. So I can tell you that, and you will find this out when you listen to the commentary track by Russell and Jimmy, but the first time that Clyde Barker saw the Cabal Cut, he cried. <laughs> so that says it all right there. And uh, so uh, on our commentary track, I uh, hope you enjoy it. We did the best work that we could to give you a trivia-filled, fun uh, hangout with a couple of buddies watching the movie. You know, I recommend you make some popcorn when you watch it because I'm sure you'll have a good time. So let us know what you thought about our commentary track on the comments below, please. And, uh, and just enjoy it, you know. So this edition of Nightbreed the Cabal Cut came in 250 copies. 50 of those were called the Standard Edition. And they were priced, a special price, $50 for Occupy Midian. And on our exclusive offer to the members of Occupy Midian that happened on September 21st, 
I can tell you that even though some copies were sold at Son of Monster Palooza, it was just a handful of copies. Really, the bulk of the standard edition, almost 50 copies, were sold out almost within the hour that we opened up the link for ordering the Cabal Cut. So thank you to everybody who just jumped immediately onto these copies. Uh, you really made everybody very happy over at Seraphim. And then there were 200 copies uh, called the Deluxe Edition that came with a Decker enamel pin, a Daniel Serra poster, uh, a poster by Ralph McQuarrie, um, 10 postcards, and I believe a numbered slipcase, numbered to 200 copies. So if I'm forgetting something, I'm sorry, I'm just saying this by memory, but that edition caused a little bit of controversy with some people because they didn't think that it was um, a good price. But what I can tell you is that by the time that I'm recording this, which is a week after it started selling, we can officially say that the Cabal Cut edition is sold out. So earlier today, there were only two copies left, and then we got confirmation by Seraphin that you can tell everybody that it's completely sold out. And if you go to the real Clyde Barker store, you will see that. So thank you to everybody who secured a copy. And to everybody who couldn't get a copy, I'm sorry that this wasn't uh, made available in larger numbers. Uh, the reason for that is simple. The reason is that, you know, Morgan Creek just allowed Clive Barker to sell 250 copies. So that's what they had to work with. This is the scale of the release that we have to work with. And so I hope that in the future, another company will come over and license this Cabal Cut and release it to a larger audience. Until then, this is really all we can work with. And again, I'm sorry. I know that a lot of people would like to be able to buy a copy or a lot of people feel like they should have gotten a copy that was cheaper, but you, you can't control this stuff, really. It's to cover the costs, honestly, the 50 copies that were called the standard edition, they weren't even supposed to be a thing to begin with. It was just going to be 250 copies with a package, with the posters, with a pin, with the postcards, and that was going to be $250. So the fact that you guys got a, a 50 copies at a standard price, which was originally going to be $75, and then thanks to the offer from the Real Clyde Barker store to the exclusive Occupy Meeting group, it, they just lower the price to $50. So those sold out really quickly, like I said, within an hour, and the other 200 sold within the week. So congrats to everybody who secured a copy. You're really supporting Clyde Barker, and everybody there is really happy about this. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoy the video. Please tell your friends about Nightbreed the Cabal Cut. Post pictures of it on Occupy Midian. Show us your collection. Tell your friends... You know, show it to your friends. And don't forget, the important thing is that if you haven't read this book, Cabal by Clive Barker, it's an excellent novel. This is one of my copies. It's a first edition. And I just, I, I've read it so many times. And also, if you can find a copy of this, Cabal and Other Annotations by Fiddleblack, be sure to get a copy of this because it's extremely limited. They only made 300 of these. And um, it's just amazing. It's uh, annotated, it's got essays, it's got introductions by several people, and it's just something you should probably find. So thank you again, read Cabal, and Occupy Midian.